just over my left shoulder is the town of Bethlehem, modern Bethlehem and ancient Bethlehem where Jesus was born. Uh, when you see the word Beth in the Bible, it means house. Bethlehem means house of bread. Uh, just a few others like uh, Bethsaida uh, is house of fish. It's a fishing village. Uh, Beth Page means house of figs. Bethesda, the pool of Bethesda, if you remember where the lame man was healed, means house of mercy. And of course, Beth El, El me Elohim, God, means house of God. So Bethlehem means house of bread. It's where the bread of life was born, Jesus Christ. So I want to talk to you just a little bit about Bethlehem. I've got four points for you today to help you hopefully remember the message. Number one, I want to talk to you about the place of Bethlehem. And you know, when the wise men came, they said, where is he who is born? And they got the scripture out and they read Micah 5.2 that said in Bethlehem is where the ruler would come from. So Bethlehem is famous in the whole world, but it's not famous for something that it did. It's famous for what happened in Bethlehem. And that is that it's the birthplace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, Bethlehem is not a large city. It's actually about 25 to 30,000 people even this day, but it was much smaller uh, when Jesus was born. So just so you know a little bit about Bethlehem, uh, this is the place God chose, but here's why God chose it. Here's why, here's what we're told. Because you are the least of all the cities of Judah. That's why God chose a small and an insignificant place for his son to be born. I just want you to think about how many times you and I feel small and insignificant and God chose a small and insignificant place for his son to be born. So any small and insignificant feeling that you have, just know that the savior can come from that place in your life. So first of all, the place of Bethlehem. Here's the second thing I wanna to mention to you. The people of Bethlehem, Joseph and Mary. But before we talk about Joseph and Mary, you need to understand there's another person that came from Bethlehem that all of us know. His name was David. Let me read you the scripture in 1 Samuel 16. He says, the Lord said to Samuel, how long will you mourn for Saul, seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel? Fill your horn with oil and go, I'm sending you to Jesse, the Bethlehemite. In other words, from the person from Bethlehem, for I provided myself a king. And then verse four says, so Samuel did what the Lord said and he went to Bethlehem. So David came from Bethlehem. That's the whole reason that Joseph and Mary had to go to Bethlehem. They lived in Nazareth, which was about 75 miles away. And they had to go to Bethlehem because they were of the house and lineage of David. And they had to go for a census and to be registered there. When we talk about Joseph and Mary, again, we're talking about ordinary people. Joseph was a carpenter. Mary, most scholars believe, was a teenager. So these weren't well-known or famous people. Now they're known because of how God used them. But at that time, they were just ordinary people. So we have a, a small and insignificant ordinary place, and we have small and insignificant ordinary people. Please don't ever let the enemy tell you God can't use you because you see yourself as being small and insignificant or ordinary because God loves to use ordinary people. Let's talk now about the problems of Bethlehem. So we've talked about the place and the people. Let's talk about the problems of Bethlehem. Joseph has to go, Joseph and Mary to Bethlehem in the last trimester of her pregnancy because it was 75 miles away. So she was somewhere around eight to nine months pregnant. Obviously we know that while they were there, she delivers Jesus. So here's Mary having to travel 75 miles in the last trimester of her pregnancy. That's a problem. What I'm trying to say to you is these are human beings, just like we are. They had problems just like we did. And now I, I, I have no clue what it's like to be pregnant, ladies. I understand that. I don't know what you go through, but as husbands, 
we kind of go through some things too. <laughs> uh, uh, I, I don't know if Joseph got chewed out several times along the way, you know? He could have gotten lost, and like all men, he didn't want to ask for directions. And he probably heard that from his pregnant wife. Think about this too. When they get to Bethlehem, there's no room for them in the inn. It kind of makes me wonder <laughs> if Mary said, the Son of God has to be born in a stable because you didn't think we needed reservations. So there, I'm just trying to get you to kind of not think about so much the perfect little nativity scene and realize there's a place called Bethlehem that was very small and insignificant. There are people of Bethlehem, small and insignificant, and there were problems associated with the birth of God's Son because they were people, they were humans. Now here's the greatest thing, here's point number four for, for today, the promise of Bethlehem. That Micah 5, 2 says that out of Bethlehem will come the ruler. Verses four and five says, and he shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God, and they shall abide forever. For now he shall be great to the ends of the earth. Now here's verse five. This is the promise of Bethlehem. And this one, speaking of Jesus, shall be peace. Jesus came into the world to bring peace. But here's what you have to know. Peace is not the absence of problems. Peace is that feeling that we know God is with us and God is leading us even though we still have problems. Think about Joseph and Mary. Think about their travels. Think about Jesus being born in a stable, laid in a manger. A manger is a feeding trough, the Son of God. All the problems that happened, and yet this is the one who brings peace to the whole world. No matter what you're going through, no matter how insignificant you feel, and no matter how significant your problems are right now, Jesus is peace. Jesus can bring you peace right now in the midst of your situation. The announcement from the angels was that the Son has been born, the Messiah is born, peace on earth, goodwill toward men. And when we say peace on earth, we don't mean that everything's going to work out perfectly or everything's going to go perfectly. What we mean is in the midst of the problems we're going through, we can have peace. And that is my prayer for you today. I'm praying for you today that you have peace even in the midst of problems. Let me pray with you just for a moment. Lord, thank you, thank you, thank you that right over my shoulder here, you sent your son your son wasn't born in a palace. He was born in a place that was small and insignificant to people who were ordinary, who had problems, yet he was born with the promise of peace. And we thank you, Lord, and I pray for every person today that you will give us peace, no matter what we're walking through, because of the Prince of Peace. In Jesus' name. Amen.